Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu. In this video, I'll take you to the steps of making pre-prick carbon fiber parts. So these will be made in the molds that were made in the previous tutorial and also take you to the steps of finishing these parts that were made there. So one will be with a polished look, the other one will be with a high gloss uh, coming out of a spray can. So I try to keep everything as DIY as possible. So in this tutorial, it will be a 1K spray can. In future videos, I'll go into more details about finishing carbon fiber parts, like in a professional way and uh, different ways that it can be done. So if you missed the previous tutorial, make sure to check it out. It will be in the description down below and on the top right. So as you might have seen in the previous tutorial, I went to a post curing of 60 degrees because I knew that I was going to use some laminating epoxy that is cold hardening, so at room temperatures. For the pre prick we'll need high temperatures, so 120 degrees. So I had to like raise the TG value of these prints. So if you like this video and want to stay up to date, make sure to follow me on Instagram as well, where I post daily updates. So the TG had to be raised, so at first I didn't know was I going to send these molds to the graveyard or was, was I still going able to use them. Um, the answer is yes and no. So um, at first everything looked good, but then I've noticed that like it shrunk on the tight edges and the flat areas weren't that flat anymore. So you can see it here, but it's still like a good result. We went till 120 degrees on a PLA that is normally like labeled at 60 degrees so it looks promising but here you can see i'm trying to show you we had some undercuts like in the oval shape of the mold and then the sides bent a bit inwards but at 120 degrees i was like impressed that it held that well because we're dealing with a lot of factors we have the 3d print and we have the vacuum casting aluminium um, like ports resin in it as well that is like limit till 100, and 100 degrees or just a bit more uh, but these two factors made that the mold probably shrunk a bit so about like the pre prick I have some more videos on my channel so I'll go quickly quickly through it but pre prick is pre impregnated uh, carbon fiber that already has the resin in it um, it won't cure at room temperatures so you'll need an oven and you'll need to cure it at 120 degrees so that's why for me like it's a big important thing to know will PLA molds hold these temperatures so here I'm going through the steps so you apply it like a sticker and um, then you add um, like the uh, perforate release film you put it into a bag so this is called debulking it's where you remove all the air that is still in between the layers, so still not in the oven. Um, then I prepared the vacuum bag in between, and then we'll put the parts with a release film on top into that bag. So here you can see it, this is after debulking, and now the release film is added, so this will avoid the resin sticking to the breather fabric or the bag. Um, it's just a, like a, a thin film, that will prevent that. So then the breeder fabric is added and everything is put into the mold. So it's important to have the breeder fabric, otherwise you wouldn't be able to pull like a good vacuum as the bag will seal itself um, and make it impossible to have like a full vacuum. Or if you have like a leak, um, it can cause problems. So here I'm putting everything into the oven, then it's after eight hours, I can put it um, out of the oven again. Uh, so everything was done on one day and then I'm able to remove the parts from the bag. So till here, like I was expecting the mold to held well, but were the parts coming out good as well? So this was like the, the unknown. I've also noticed that I should have bolted like the holes back again because some like resin might have filled these um, and making it like having some um like not enough resin on your parts because the resin went elsewhere um but here we can see the results so we have some pinholes um we have some air voids but seeing like the geometry of the parts and where the air pockets are i think it's like more of a user error because i went quite quickly because i thought it was an easy shape so it might be possible that i had some bridging there because the rest of the part is quite good um 
okay for the the pinholes it's a problem but this can be like a curing cycle that isn't good uh, also other options are that the um, mold is gassing out something like you have it polyurethanes or polyester molds with uh, pre prick causing some problems with the curing uh, so this is an unknown but so far so good so the molds held well they can be reused again um, and like the surface is, is in general okay um, but like more testing needs to be done and I will be doing more testing so I have the two finishes of the previous part so one will be polished carbon fiber that you see in Formula 1 main reason is they don't want to add the weight of the clear so they just like sand and polish the carbon fiber to have like a, a good airflow so the, the part is good but they don't want to use clear um, just to show you two possible finishes, I'll be using one with a 1K spray can clear and the other one will be polished. So one of the parts, if you have seen that video, um, it will be on the top right and in the description. Um, we had some like big gaps like an air pocket. So a way to fix that is just to add a layer of epoxy first, just to try to fill that gap. Like in the automotive industry, they would use like a bondo or a filler because mostly they'll or like repaint the car so it's not a problem but on carbon fiber parts you want to keep like the, the weave of the carbon fiber and the visual aspect of it so you'll need to use like a transparent bondo in this case it's uh, an epoxy that i've used so i've added the epoxy resin uh, very thin you can add as many layers as you want and then you sand everything flat again and then your big like pinholes or gaps or like big flaws that you have on your part should be gone then i proceed with a 1k spray uh, to fill like the tiny pinholes i put it quite thick so you can see i still have runs but it's not a problem because we'll be resanding the parts with a 240 grits um, all over so i'm just removing like 90 percent of the clear here uh, and hoping that like all the tiny pinholes are now filled um, with the 1k so here I'm sending everything with as well because it's important if you're sending that deep into your clear you don't want to sand through your carbon fiber as well. By using some water you can visually see through the clear uh, while sanding. So here is the result. Um, most of the pinholes are filled here and now we can proceed with the finishing coats. If at this stage you're still unhappy you can just um, redo what we did in the previous steps till you're fully happy i have to mention so this is just a test piece this piece has no use it's just like a demonstration piece that i made for these tutorials so i'll be going through a step where i'm 90 percent okay with it just to like show you how to finish parts in this way um, i know so it's a 1k so it's not like the um, most durable or like the most high-tech finish but i thought i make 3d printing molds um, that people can do at home as well so I was thinking I'm not going to use like a 2k spray gun and, um, and go like full on on this tutorial I'll be making another tutorial about finishing parts like um, in another tutorial tutorial later on so for the polished part um, it's easy you start with 320 mostly and then you go up in grid like 500 800 a thousand and a 2000 and here's the finish of the two parts after the 2000 grit uh, sanding so it's still not glossy um, but that will come with the polishing state so you see i still had a run but like i say i'm 90 percent okay with this part it will just show you the glow um, and like the the gloss of the finished part so for the polished carbon fiber i'm able to use the polishing wheel do not use it on a 1k because it's too aggressive it will generate too much heat and the 1k is too soft to handle like these temperatures so take note a 1k clear is just good for like indoor applications with less use if you're using it on car parts and so on where you use them frequently uh, ex ex expect some scratches on the polished parts on the other hand it's a very strong surface so um, this is one of the the advantages of using a polished carbon fiber instead of a 1k clear the 2k clear uh, that i'll do in other videos will be more durable it's what they use on car parts and give you better results because you can lay it thicker as well so here are the two parts uh, compared next to each other 
So we get a gloss, but it's like a, a silverish shine on the polished parts. And then the cleared parts, you'll see like a nice glossy reflection. Um, I know still some pinholes, but like I said, it's like more, more for demonstration purposes. Uh, but here we can compare the two. Let me know which, which one you prefer. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.